Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dear students, today we will uh, discuss an important topic that is vulcanization of natural rubber or you can say vulcanization of rubber. This process was discovered by Charles Goodyear in 1839. Today in this very lecture we will discuss what is vulcanization of natural rubber and why we have to carry this process. First we will discuss why we have to carry this process then we will discuss what is the vulcanization of the natural rubber. These are two things. First we should know why we have to carry this process then we will discuss what is this process in this point. In the previous lecture at the end of the previous lecture we have discussed the natural rubber among this point. We have discussed the natural rubber. At the end of that very lecture, I have mentioned certain problems associated with the natural rubber. First, I will draw the structure of that rubber. C double bond C, CH3. You can consult your textbook and you will find the structure of natural rubber. You will have CH2. Then this is one repeating structural unit that it will be repeated. You will have CH2. You will have C, CH3. Double bond C, CH2. It will be repeated. This is natural rubber. The natural rubber, you have, we have mentioned that it has great elasticity. It has high degree of elasticity. Remember this one is the first problem high degree of elasticity because it is elastomer it has high degree of elasticity high degree of elasticity it is the property of natural rubber but it is also the problem of the natural rubber high elasticity degree of elasticity second it is sticky in nature it is sticky in nature remove this point it is sticky in nature. It is tacky. It sticks with the surfaces. It is sticky in nature. These two properties, that is elasticity and sticky in nature, it becomes even more, and it means that elasticity gets increased, stickiness, nature gets increased at high temperature. These two properties, elasticity and sticky nature, becomes even more at high temperature when the temperature will be high elasticity increases from this point the sticky nature also increases once i'm talking about the properties but they are the problems associated with the natural rubber the first is natural rubber has high degree of elasticity the second it is sticky in nature and these two properties they become even more they become even more at high temperature remember this point the third I will mention it is brittle. It is brittle at low temperature. It is brittle at low temperature. It means that if the temperature gets decreased, what happens? It can break into the pieces. It is brittle at low temperature. Three. Now we have the fourth problem. It has great degree of water absorption. I have already mentioned the previous lecture at the end of the previous lecture because of double bond. If you have the double bond, water gets added to this. If you have water, H positive will, for example, this will be shift minus charge will come on this carbon. H plus will be added to this. OH minus will be added to this. It means that whenever there is double bond, what happens? Water gets added. This is the fourth. I can mention the fourth problem. It has it has high water absorption tendency high water absorption tendency high water absorption tendency because of double bonds and the first natural rubber has high degree of elasticity and is sticky key nature these two properties become even more so at high temperature it is brittle at low temperature it has high water absorption tendency. The next problem associated with the natural rubber, it is readily attacked. It is readily attacked by 
it is readily attacked by organic solvents it is readily attacked by organic solvents it is the next problem associated with the last problem associated with the natural rubber the sickest thing it is attacked it is attacked by oxidizing agents it is attacked by oxidizing agents you have to mention these are the various problems associated with the natural rubber to overcome these problems the natural rubber is subjected to vulcanization process first you should know why we have to carry the vulcanization process in order to overcome these problems associated with the natural rubber natural rubber has high degree of elasticity and is sticky in nature these two properties become even more at high temperature among this point it is it has high water yeah, it is brittle at low temperature it has high water absorption tendency because of double bonds it is readily attacked by organic salt and it is attacked by oxidizing agent in order to overcome these six problems associated with the natural rubber the natural rubber is subjected to the process of vulcanization now what is vulcanization it is a process of heating the natural rubber in this process we have to heat the natural rubber with the sulfur or sulfur compound there is a simple definition of the vulcanization we have to heat the natural rubber with sulfur or you can say sulfur compounds the process of heating the natural rubber with sulfur or sulfur compounds is known as vulcanization first we will mention these points then we discuss what is vulcanization Remember this point. We have to mention these points as natural rubber, natural rubber, natural rubber has high degree of elasticity. This is the first point you have to mention. High degree of elasticity. High degree of elasticity and is sticky in nature and is sticky in nature and is sticky in nature these two properties these two properties i mean to say elasticity and sticky nature these two properties these two properties become even more so even more they become they get increased become even more so at high temperature at high temperature remember this point it means that it is elasticity increases by increasing temperature and its sticky-ness also increases by increasing temperature remember this point it is brittle at low temperature natural rubber is brittle at low temperature brittle at low temperature moreover what are the next problems what are the next moreover it has high high water absorption tendency why water absorption tendency it has high water absorption tendency and is readily attacked and is readily attacked readily attacked by organic solvents organic solvents and organic solvents and oxidizing agents oxidizing agents dear students first you have to remember these are the problems associated with the natural rubber if the question comes why we need to bring the vulcanization it is because of these problems of the natural rubber we need to bring the vulcanization of natural rubber why we have to carry in order to improve these properties we have to bring the vulcanization of natural rubber you have to mention to overcome to what in order to improve in order to 
It is a very important topic as far as the examination is considered in order to improve in order to improve these properties these properties the natural rubber is subjected the natural rubber is subjected rubber is subjected to vulcanization process is subjected to vulcanization vulcanization process this is the question why we need to bring the vulcanization to overcome these problems properties associated with the natural rubber now we will see what is vulcanization of natural rubber how you can define i have already mentioned it it is simple heating of natural rubber with sulfur or sulfur compounds it is the vulcanization it is the process it is the how you can define the vulcanization it is the process of heating you have to mention this definition it is the process of heating the natural rubber because of the problems mentioned above natural rubber it is the process of heating the natural rubber with sulfur with sulfur or you can say sulfur compounds or sulfur compounds with sulfur or sulfur compounds so on this one it is the process of heating the natural rubber with sulfur or sulfur compounds in presence of we have a catalyst in presence of zinc oxide what is the role of uh, zinc oxide increases increases the rate of increases the rate of vulcanization increases the rate of vulcanization this is the point the role of catalyst to, to increase the rate of vulcanization at a temperature of heating we have to carry the heating at a temperature of at a temperature of at a temperature of 385 to 415 kelvin this is the temperature range where we have to bring the vulcanization process on this point this is the definition of vulcanization vulcanization is the process of heating where at which temperature we have to carry the the heating process 385 to 415 kelvin natural rubber with sulfur or sulfur compounds in presence of zinc oxide what is the role of zinc oxide it increases the rate of vulcanization now we will see what happen during the vulcanization during vulcanization sulfur bridges are formed between the polymeric chain now we will see what happens during the vulcanization process i will draw two diagrams to understand this if you have natural rubber this is the natural rubber this is the natural rubber ch2 then it will be repeated ch2 ch3 double bond c you have the ch2 this is one polymeric chain we have another polymeric chain let us say we have another polymeric chain ch2 c ch3 double bond c ch2 ch2 ch3 double bond c ch2 this is one polymeric chain in the case of natural rubber and it is another what happens during the vulcanization when you heat the natural rubber with sulfur or sulfur compound in presence of zinc oxide what happens sulfur bridges are formed cross linking takes place you get a cross linked polymer and that cross linked polymer is known as vulcanized rubber now the question arises why are the sulfur bridges are being formed sulfur bridges are being formed between the two polymeric chains at two sides one is double bonds will be vanished they will be vanished 
when the double bond number of double bond gets decreased the problem is the properties the mesh rubber will be improved among this point it means that i will show the first linkage how what will happen so how the sulfur bridge will be formed the double bond will be vanished this is the double bond it means that sulfur bridge will be formed at the reactive double bond site this is the sulfur bridge cross linking takes place remember this point cross linking takes place between the two polymeric chains sulfur bridges are being formed between the two polymeric chains and where the polymeric while the sulfur bridges are being formed at the reactive double bond sites this is the first while the sulfur bridge is being formed the second is at reactive allylic position you know what is allylic position if you have double bond the carbon which is attached we have discussed so many times the carbon attached to carbon carbon double bond this is allylic carbon this is allylic carbon remember this point the carbon attached to carbon carbon double bond this carbon is known as allylic carbon or we can say it is allylic site we can say allylic for example this is carbon carbon double bond it will be allylic carbon it will be allylic carbon this is carbon carbon double bond it will be allylic it will be allylic sulfur bridge is also form is being also formed at the allylic allylic position for example hydrogen will be removed here during heating process one hydrogen for example we have this hydrogen this is uh, hydrogen will be removed during the vulcanization process sulfur bridge will be formed at the allylic positions it means that sulfur bridges are being formed at two sides at two positions one is at the reactive carbon carbon double bond position and the second is allylic i will notify it this is allylic carbon you can also show this carbon and with this carbon remember this point you can show this carbon and this carbon because it is also allylic this is also allylic you can show this one or you can show this with this one remember this point this is the point you have to mention we can say this is the vulcanized rubber vulcanized rubber now what is vulcanized rubber it is cross linked natural rubber sulfur bridged natural rubber is known as vulcanized rubber and while the sulfur bridges are being formed at the reactive carbon carbon double bonds and at the allylic position is one point and because of these and because of these cross links the mechanical properties the strength of the natural rubber gets increased you have mechanical properties gets improved mechanical properties gets increased increased you have to draw this very structure this is the structure of vulcanized rubber actually yahan pe double bond tha yahan pe double bond tha double bond they have been removed and sulfur bridges are being formed at the Uh, double bond position and also at the allylic position remember this point we will mention this point what happens during the vulcanization during vulcanization during vulcanization during vulcanization sulfur bridges sulfur bridges or cross links cross links cross links are being formed links are being or being formed or being formed between the polymeric chains between the polymeric chains are being formed between the polymeric chains and while the sulfur bridges are being formed sulfur links are being formed at the reactive allylic positions or at double bond position you can also mention this sulfur links sulfur links or bridges are being formed are being formed you can mention it or being formed at the reactive at the reactive allylic or double bond positions double bond positions reactive allylic or double bond positions you know so because of sulfur bridges what happens because due to the sulfur bridges the mechanical properties 
of the natural rubber gets increased. You can mention this due to sulfur bridges, due to sulfur bridges, due to sulfur bridges, the mechanical properties, the mechanical properties, the mechanical properties of natural rubber, natural rubber gets increased. Mechanical properties of natural rubber gets increased. Gets increased. Gets increased. Moreover, what happens? Moreover, what happens uh, uh, due to the sulfur bridges? Yeah. Uh, the vulcanized rubber has better improved properties than the natural rubber. You can also mention it. When you bring the vulcanization, the vulcanized rubber has will have uh, effective elastic, elasticity. It will have effective mechanical strength. It will have, it will now, now it will not be readily attacked by the oxidizing agents. Now it will not be attacked by the uh, organic solvents. Now it has poor it has less water absorption tendency it means that you can mention after vulcanization what happens the vulcanized rubber has has little water absorption tendency is not readily attacked by the organic solvents is not attacked by the oxidizing agents and it has great elastic you can mention these important points the vulcanized rubber the vulcanized rubber, the rubber formed after the vulcanization, the vulcanized rubber, the vulcanized rubber has, has improved elasticity, has effective elasticity. How much we need effective elasticity? Remember this point? has effective elasticity, has little water absorption tendency, has little water, little water absorption tendency, has little water absorption tendency, will not be readily attacked, will not be readily will not be readily attacked by attacked by organic solvents organic solvents and oxidizing agents oxidizing oxidizing agents Air because of the double bond. When the number of double bond get increased, now it has the vulcanized rubber has less tendency to be attacked by the oxidizing agents. It means that in simple words, you have to mention that vulcanization improves the property of the natural rubber. You can mention it has natural rubber, natural rubber. Sulfur S8, or you can say sulfur compound, your choice, in presence of zinc oxide at a temperature of 385 to 415 Kelvin, what you will get, you will get the vulcanized rubber. Vulcanized rubber. Now the question arises the hardness of vulcanized rubber. It depends upon the extent of sulfur added amount of sulfur added. For example, if you add 5% of sulfur, the vulcanized rubber, vulcanized rubber is used for making tires. Remember this point, tires. 5%, if you add 5% of rubber, if you have 35, 30% of sulfur, 30% of sulfur, it is used for making battery case rubbers. Battery case rubbers, the 
rubber which is present outside the batteries that is very hard battery case rather it means that the hardness of vulcanized rubber depends upon the amount of sulfur added during the vulcanization you can also remember this point the hardness of vulcanized rubber the hardness of hardness of hardness of vulcanized rubber hardness of vulcanized rubber depends upon depends upon the amount of sulfur added amount of sulfur sulfur added during heating during heating during heating around this point for example you have to mention two examples if 5% sulfur is added 5% sulfur is added at that time at that time rubber is used for rubber is used for used for making tire rubbers making tire rubbers you can mention this point similarly you can mention similarly if 35 percent sulfur is added if you add 30 percent or 30 percent sulfur is added at that time at that time sulfur at that time rubber vulcanized rubber at that time rubber is used for making used for making battery case rubbers battery case rubbers you can mention this it means that the hardness of the vulcanized rubber depends upon the amount of sulfur added now in simple words how you can remember the vulcanization process and why we carry the vulcanization process you should remember these things there are certain problems associated with the properties of the natural rubber to improve those properties we heat the natural rubber with sulfur or sulfur compounds in the presence of zinc oxide at temperature we have mentioned it and what happens during the vulcanization sulfur bridges are being formed at two reactive sites either at double bonds or at allylic sites from this point and the sulfur bridges sulfur cross links increases the mechanical strength of the vulcanized rubber this was about the vulcanization of the rubber remember this point now we have another important topic and what is that very topic synthetic rubbers we have discussed the natural rubber and vulcanization of natural rubber remember this point now we will discuss synthetic rubbers synthetic rubbers synthetic rubbers at this point synthetic rubbers dear students how you can define the synthetic rubber synthetic rubber can be defined as any vulcanized rubber any vulcanized rubber which can stretch twice its normal leg. This is the definition of synthetic rubber. Any rubber which can stretch twice, uh, it uh, stretch can stretch twice its normal length and regain its original size and shape when the stretched force is removed. For example, if you have a rubber, it can stretch twice. And when the structural force is removed, it regains its original size and shape. And any vulcanized rubber which has this property, stretch to why then it is a normal length, and regain the original size and shape when the force is removed, that rubber is known as synthetic rubber. You can say any vulcanized rubber. You can mention any vulcanized rubber. Vulcanized rubber. Yeah, you can say synthetic rubber can be defined as can be defined as as 
penny vulcanized rubber any vulcanized rubber which can stretch this is the definition which can stretch which can stretch twice which can stretch twice then it is then it is normal length normal length which can stretch twice then it is normal length and returns and returns to it is original to it is original size and shape size and shape size and shape when the structural force is removed when the structured force is removed force is removed this is the definition of any synthetic rubber any vulcanized rubber which can stretch to wise then it is normal length and returns to its normal size and shape when the structural force is removed that's why this is the definition and after the chemical analysis after analysis it has been found that these synthetic rubbers these are actually the derivatives synthetic rubbers are derivatives of derivatives of butadiene butadiene derivatives that's fine we can derive them we can derive them we can derive the synthetic derivatives rubbers from butadiene derivatives among this point for example if you consider this butadiene derivative if you have one uh, one three uh, one three butadiene for example one three butadiene you have to take butadiene derivative let us say this one this is one three butadiene from this point butadiene you can bring it as homopolymerization it can undergo homopolymerization it can form the synthetic rubber this is the point synthetic rubbers can be either homopolymers of butadiene or copolymers of this with any unsaturated unit this is the point either butadiene this one will undergo homopolymerization remember this point or it can undergo copolymerization with another unsaturated unit on this point it means that synthetic rubbers are either homopolymers of butadiene derivatives or copolymers of butadiene derivatives with another unsaturated uh, unit from this point you can mention this point also synthetic rubbers synthetic rubbers can be rubbers can be synthetic rubbers can be either homopolymers homopolymers of butadiene derivatives butadiene derivatives butadiene derivatives or copolymers of copolymers of butadiene butadiene derivatives derivatives with another remember this point with another unsaturated compound with another unsaturated unit unsaturated unit now we will we will understand this by taking the examples you have to discuss four important synthetic rubbers we'll discuss them now we will mention important synthetic rubbers some important some important synthetic some important synthetic rubbers some important synthetic rubbers for example we have uh, neoprene neoprene or it is also known as chloroprene chloroprene it is also known as diprene remember this point this is the first first prepared synthetic rubber this is the first uh, the first ever prepared synthetic rubber chloroprene neoprene or diprene chloroprene kya hota hai chloroprene 
it is two chloro one three butad i. How you can prepare it? It is prepared. It is prepared. It is prepared by the prepared by the free radical free radical addition free radical addition polymerization of free radical addition polymerization of chloroprene chloroprene remember this point chloroprene what is chloroprene you can bring it as polymerization this is chloroprene ch2 double bond ccl you will have ch double bond ch2 this is 2 chloro 1 3 butadiene butadiene it means that it is the derivative of butadiene i have already mentioned synthetic rubbers are obtained they are derived they are the derivatives of butadiene derivatives of butadiene it is derivative of butadiene when you bring it as polymerization what happens what happens during the polymerization shift bond will here it will be created here valence will be created at this carbon and at this carbon what you will have you will have ch2 cl double bond ch ch2 it will be the neoprene it will be neoprene this one is neoprene two chlor it is chloroprene when you bring it as polymerization, you get the new brain. You can also mention its properties and uses from the textbook. You can mention, but I will mention list some important synthetic rubbers. So the first one we have discussed that is neoprene, or you can say chloroprene, or you can say diprene. Run this point. Now the second, we have Buna S. We have already discussed this. Butadiene styrene rubber. You have butadiene. You have butadiene, this is n times, and you have styrene. We have discussed it four times in this very lecture. This is styrene, styrene, then it undergoes polymerization. What happens? It will shift here, it will go here, it will go here. You will have CH2, single bond CH, double bond CH, CH2, CH2. CH, you will have benzene ring. This is benzene ring. Remember this point. This is butadiene styrene rubber. We have discussed the polymerizing agent here. It is sodium. It is butadiene styrene rubber. Butadiene styrene rubber. And it is popularly known as Buna S. Buna S. Bu stands for butadiene. S stands for styrene and Na stands for the sodium polymerizing agent and it is another kind of synthetic rubber, Buna S. You have another important uh, synthetic rubber that is Buna M, third important synthetic rubber, Buna M. What is Buna M? Here we have but butadiene, you have sodium, but instead of S styrene, you have acrylonitrile. Instead of styrene, you have acrylonitrile. And what is acrylonitrile? When there is cyanide group attached to carbon carbon, double bond on this point. This is vinyl cyanide. You see acrylonitrile. Acrylonitrile. Here in stands for acrylonitrile. Yeah, the butadiene same. You have acrylonitrile, you have the sodium, remember this point. What will be the polymer? Same thing will happen, what you will have CH2, CH double bond, CH, CH2, CH2, CH, you will have CN, it will be Buna N. It is Buna N. N stands for acrylonitrile. Remember this point, Buna S, Buna N, these are synthetic rubbers. And we have another that is thiocol. The fourth important synthetic rubber that is thiocol. Thiocol. It is also known as polysulfide rubber. It is also known as polysulfide rubber. Remember this point, it is also known as polysulfide rubber. Now what we have in the thiocol, we have one, two dichloroethane. 
it is 1 2 dichloroethane 1 2 dichloroethane 1 2 dichloroethane on this point we will heat it with sodium tetrasulfide this is sodium tetrasulfide in presence of magnesium hydroxide as catalyst this is the way yahan pe you will have any in presence of magnesium hydroxide as catalyst what happens sodium it will come with chlorine sodium will come out with chlorine you will have n times of this n times of this what you will have minus n times nacl n times nacl what you will have now ch2 it will come out ch2 it will form bond with sulfur it will come out it will come out sulfur 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 it will be n times this is thiocol this is thiocol how you can obtain the thiocol by heating the 1 2 dichloroethane with sodium tetrasulfide sodium tetrasulfide these are some important important uh, synthetic polymers we have neoprene we have buna and we have buna s and we have thiocol this was about the rubbers natural and synthetic rubbers inshallah we discuss the remaining things inshallah in the next lecture till then fiya mandila